Okay, so hi there Cleo, this is an additional response video. I forgot to mention it at the end of last video, so we just continue from here, Cleo. And it's in response in addition to channel maintenance and health. Keeping your channel healthy. We've talked about the growth, how that can come about, and with what you've been doing, the consistency there will help in keeping it grow and the numbers going up. But how do you keep the health of the channel doing well? And I can come down to one's own actions. We briefly touched upon it, didn't we? Where it was like, if you've got a lot of energy building up within you, you release it into a video format and you choose how or in which way to do that. And whether it works or not, whether you want it to be a public or private video, depending on the outcome. If you've got a gut feeling, bad or good, then you know which way to go about it. If you need to look back at the second video, what we did, you can look back there. But this one goes a bit further and it can involve external research, right? And basically what it is, it's when you look at YouTube documentary channels out there where they talk about and capture the story of how this YouTuber, this channel ended up going into the downfall period. And was never seen again. We're not talking about a mystery case, we're just talking about the stories of big, popular, successful YouTube channels out there which went on a downwards trend in terms of maybe popularity, views, falling out of favour with one's audience, making questionable decisions, saying the wrong things on camera, being caught up in controversy, being labelled certain bad things and it actually coming true or it was revealed at a later point and then, you know, the audience members feeling disgusted and moving on. You know, different stories with different creators, some more extreme than others, but it, you know, it kind of comes down to the choice of the channel owner. What did they do next? What did they say next to cause them to go downhill from then on, right? I'm not sure if you're aware, Cleo, of these like YouTube channels which capture and talk about the stories of other big YouTubers who ended up doing worse off down the line. I mean, is there any examples to give on the spot quickly? You got Sunny V2. Sunny S-U-N-N-Y, V, the letter V, number two. I think that's one whole word as well. You type that in, Cleo, Sunny V2 on YouTube, it'll be, a, it'll be a channel where it's some Australian guy narrating and documenting different YouTubers and even famous people in general out there, and maybe some influencers and on other platforms besides YouTube where things went bad. It, 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 it's more associated with like um, a negative theme on their channel. Most of it is at least. Might be a few positives, but it's mainly negatives. Documenting the negatives, which led to the downfall of somebody or some people, right? And in that regards, I guess negativity can be a form of popularity and bringing people in. I'm not saying that that's what you need to do there, but it works for different people. Positivity works for some, negativity works for others, depends what the content is about. But it's not about, you know, the, the light or the dark side and then implement it into your own videos. It's just more so the research aspect of listening into these YouTube documentaries, which basically, you know, map out, even timestamp a timeline of the failures, the bad decisions, the bad choices, questionable things in their life which led to them being worse off down the line right now I'll apply it to myself just briefly so it might make more sense to you not that it was done intentionally but I just so happened to come across those videos in the past so even before I was you know doing YouTube more full-on before I was um I, well, it's just easy to say, before 2020, so before I was uh, growing as a channel, when I was at 170 subscribers and hardly any views, 
I probably watched more videos than I uploaded at that time, at that point specifically. It has changed since, you know. But back then, I was looking at YouTube channels, the drama, the conflict. Not so much to learn in that sense, just watching it to pass some time. And maybe if it felt a bit entertaining or a bit spooky just to listen into, kind of interesting. I didn't make, I didn't really make notes. I didn't think, oh, I'll, I'll do a video response to that. I wasn't thinking any of that at the time. I just wanted to watch it and listen in and that was it and then move on. And I never really thought much about it after. And the same happened with each video I watched. So Sunny V2 was one of them. Then what's the other one? Ana was it called Anarchist? Internet Anarchist? I think it's one full username, Internet Anarchist blue profile picture or something, longer videos, instead of 10 to 20 minutes or 30, it's about an hour long. I've not really watched all the way through those, but they go deep as well. And that can be about the same subject of YouTubers, influencers, popular people, where bad decisions and choices have made them worse off down the line, right? But the important thing behind those type of videos and what I watched back then and what I watch here and there right now is actually subconsciously it must have had an impact on me because when I've been in situations where there's been drama or conflict and I've had to respond a certain way or maybe at times I didn't have to respond at all that appropriate wording was necessary and just how you responded back to it and how much you said whether you only say so much or you go all in, whether you act defensive or you act calm, whether you put a bit of a positive spin on it or you remain serious and focused. Many different ways to respond and react to different situations and times of conflict or negativity. Maybe how I may have reacted or responded way back in the past could be different to how I do now. Now, back then... I never really responded because I was never caught up in any conflict or messy situations like that because I wasn't known. So I don't have experience of before and after what I would have done back then compared to what I do now. But I do sense that if I reacted in a certain way, it probably would have been different back then compared to now because back then I wouldn't have had much to lose. If the channel got shut down, if I said the wrong thing, if I used certain wording, if, um, you know, depending how I responded back, if it went against guidelines or if people got sensitive or offended and then reported and reported, it could have led to the channel being taken down, which would have been unfortunate. But then at the same time, way back then, I wouldn't have lost much. You know, if I didn't have really many subscribers or hardly any views, I'm not losing anything. But you scale it up to where you could be in the future, okay? And I guess it could apply now. So nearly 10,000 subscribers and millions of views. Do I want to put myself in a situation where I could compromise it all and then I lose it all? Doesn't seem like a good, smart idea, does it? Sounds reckless and damaging. And not only would it impact me, but I guess it could impact the audience too, especially those over time that have supported this channel and also those that follow and watch closely. If I act out, that can have a knock-on effect to my channel, which then can have a negative knock-on effect to the audience. So no one benefits. Almost everyone suffers in some way or another. All because of one choice, one action that was made at a point in time which might have been done recklessly and it could have gone wrong from there, right? So you scale up to if I had 100, not 100, let's say 500,000 to 1 million subscribers if I was in that position. I've got a greater audience, maybe a greater responsibility in some way. Depends what age range it targets, tar targets as well. If it's fully grown adults, then they're not your responsibility. But you know, like how other YouTubers at a point in time in the past, the Minecraft YouTubers, 
the Let's Play YouTubers, how they supposedly raised a generation from a young age to adulthood. And some of those YouTubers have been caught up in controversies or they might have acted out at a certain time of the development stage of the audience members who were younger at the time that you could it could be seen as more responsibility on the channel owner because the audience they amass are of a certain age could, could be considered vulnerable, impressionable viewers. So you've got to give a good impression and act accordingly and appropriately with the certain type of people that may be around. But if you wave fully grown adults, fully developed, and also um, good sense of humour, etc, etc. The responsibility isn't as pressuring on yourself, right? So that, that can be a variable which does change. And obviously the other variable which can be measured would be how great is your channel growth? If you've put a lot of time and effort in and you've got so far and you've made progress and reached milestones, maybe you don't want to throw it away. Maybe you want to preserve and maintain it. But as you'll see with those YouTube channels out there, which do those documentaries of these bigger channels, more popular, more successful than me, etc., etc., and others out there, they did act out, they did mess up, they did make a mistake, and it led to a downfall, and they've not always risen back up. Some have flatlined, others have completely quit or disappeared, been terminated, etc. And linking back to myself, if I, if I messed up or reacted inappropriately or incorrectly to such an extreme that I could end up in the same situation, but I've not allowed that to happen. And it doesn't always have to come down to what you say exactly. It can be third party who you allow in, such as on panel, on stream. That can have a second hand delayed side effect on yourself. The people that you bring in can drag you down too, more so if it's like a live stream, live panel. That's why um, you, you get where certain channels out there who may do a live stream, bring people on or people bring themselves on, flash your image up on screen, inappropriate, against YouTube guidelines or say lots of bad stuff against guidelines because that's all within that video that pers of another person's channel. It has that knock-on effect. So the video gets reported or taken down and it's the channel owner that suffers because of a third party person that came on in to flash or say something on screen which goes against guidelines. A responsibility and punishment falls back in the hands of the owner and some of the blame falls back into the owner for them allowing someone like that to come on to panel. But you're not always going to be expecting that to happen, right? You might see the best in people or you might just think, oh, that person seems okay. They come on and then they act out and they're almost trying to drag you down, okay? They're almost like sacrificing themselves to make you worse off. And that when people do report that video for being inappropriate, that report is going directly to YouTube and then YouTube will identify that. That video may break guidelines and it just so happens to link back to this channel owner. So the person who popped up on that panel may not get punished. But the channel owner that allowed the person on does get punished. So it can be a bit unfair at times. But what it goes to highlight is there's many different ways, different choices and actions you can make where it can go wrong. And even if it isn't exactly your fault, you still get punished and feel, you know, the, the side effects of it. So you just have to be a bit alert and aware. I mean, as for the situation you're in, Cleo, I don't think... There's too much to be cautious about at this moment in time with what you're doing. As for your channel health, I'd say your channel health is healthy and mainly mostly positive. But it's just being prepared and aware for the future. If anything does go wrong or if you sense that if you allow this or allow that, it could backfire. Just trust your feelings within at times when you're able to and when you're able to make a choice but to link back to those documentaries out there the downfall of people subconsciously with me watching those videos I must have learned because there's been many many times where if I was to respond back in a video or if I'm covering a case 
and I might come across someone or some people that could be a bit problematic. How do I respond? How do I make a reference? What wording should I use? Insult, criticise, make an observation, which is the best method, it's been make an observation. Do you demonstrate balance? Do you go one-sided? Do you go all in? Are you very positive or negative, right? Try and be as balanced as possible so that they're less likely to resist, okay? When sudden things happen on the spot and you've got to defend yourself, do you do it instantaneously or do you let it sink in and then respond back at a later point when it's snowballed effect into something bigger than it actually is? When's the best time to respond back? Should you make a reference to this example or not? Will it have a knock-on effect to your audience members, right? Because you can accidentally make enemies with people even when you're not intending to do so. You could be defending yourself against one problem and because you say the wrong word or the wrong line or you make a reference or an example to something, a like or a dislike or a critique, and there are audience members that just so happen to like or participate in certain stuff which you criticise, then indirectly you're making another enemy. It can get messy at times. Have I experienced it? On a small scale. It could be, what could it be? Well, let's not give examples because that could be a downfall itself, okay? Right? But just appropriate choices of wording. I said, probably doesn't apply directly to you at this moment in time because you're not caught in drama. You've not been dragged into drama, which is good. And the videos, what you're doing, don't require one to speak at this moment. So there's no issues there. But also there's no harm in acknowledging what can and what should be done in the future or could be done more so. Because, uh, you know, different lifespans of different channels can correlate with how reckless one person is. If you're not reckless, you're probably last. If you are reckless, push the boundaries for whatever reason, you know, you could risk running your channel yourself into the ground and it might not be a good outcome. It might sound very negative this, but the positive in it all is someone like me that's been caught up in a lot of messy situations and it's been back and forth come across all different types of resistance aimed towards me and being attacked as well. You know, witnesses can share their own thoughts, you know, viewers, audience members, um, your thoughts or how you react to how I react when responding to criticism or more so resistance, because that's what it tends to be, resistance. How I respond back to it. I've seen a few people over time have mentioned a positive saying I respond back correctly or in a unique way so that'd be considered a positive right but maybe the reason why I respond back in certain ways or how I go about stuff is because subconsciously I was influenced by those YouTube documentary um, videos highlighting what went wrong for those other people out there what they did and what they said so subconsciously I'm avoiding doing and making the same mistakes what those people did. I'm doing the opposite, so I last longer. More subconscious that because I don't actively think about it. But if you do actively think on the spot and look back, right, there might be a pattern, okay? I mean, what were examples of those YouTube channels where things went wrong? I think it was some YouTube channels went completely silent on the audience and started uploading videos onto different platforms so it felt like viewers felt betrayed and when that streamer youtuber returned back because it wasn't working well and expected to be welcomed back onto the platform of youtube the audience members not as many because were like well you abandoned us you betrayed us screw you so it backfired there other situations with youtubers are where they've been caught up in drama or they've just constantly went round in circles and didn't escape it, didn't move on, just constantly stuck there for whatever reason. And then the audience members got bored, sick and tired and moved on. Saying, it's a shame, the person was good, but after coming into this drama and conflict, they spiralled out of control, they've not moved on, 
going in circles, don't want to be a part of that toxicity anymore, I'm out. That's one of the other downfalls with people. And I guess other times it could be where a channel has said a word, a reference, where it's considered very offensive or mildly offensive, it's backfired with the audience they may have at that point. So then it can lead to people going on strike or miss a protest against that channel and not coming back. And there's there's been other times and instances, a bit more extreme, where YouTubers, streamers have ended up almost disrespecting those that supported the channel so much, right, to a great degree. Where certain streamers or YouTubers have been like, you know, where's the money? You know, you've been giving me money in the past. Where's Where's it now? Why have you stopped? Give more. I need more. I deserve more. You know, that, that mentality, entitlement, where it gets a bit too intense and it comes off as a bit too rude. And then audience members are like, well, if you're going to be like that, I'm not going to support you anymore, and then pulls the plug. And then the channel finds out for themselves. They're just a few examples, okay? The other examples could be if you're in a certain community with a certain impressionable, vulnerable audience of a certain age, you know, growing a generation, that type of situation. If you're a gamer, if you play Minecraft and stuff like that. And some of those YouTubers may have been caught up in inappropriate situations or supposedly accused of inappropriate behaviour, physical, towards a person of a, a lower age. You know, those type of references and labels, whether it was 100% true or not. Sometimes it has been true and other times it was a false accusation. But either way, those channels, the owner behind it, caught up in all of that mess, got dragged down, suffered because of it and that was a downfall. What about though, I said, those people that have been falsely accused of something that they didn't do inappropriately towards a certain age, a younger individual, it never happened, but they were labelled as if it did. And audience members turned on that person, etc, etc. Well, how many have recovered from that? I don't think many. You could say that's a grey patch where it gets very unfortunate and unfair. All I can say is clear. And, you know, some people may not agree with this, but it's just how things work in life and especially online. Because Cleo... With you being a female, you're less likely to get caught up in controversies when it comes to rape, okay? So like with those YouTubers, streamers, who may have been accused of doing it to somebody else, they tend to be males, okay? You know, as time goes on, there'll be certain types of people out there that, I don't know, almost portray males, just males in general, as evil, Okay? So depending if there's bandwagons here and there or if you're around a certain audience or a community of a certain age and the lack reasoning ability and the lack loyalty, if someone is falsely accused, it can go wrong and people can abandon them and they can suffer down the line. Now, maybe one, one way looking at it, not really as a comparison because it doesn't really compare, but just, just as a suggestion, the time when Salty Pancakes labelled me a trafficker, the time when Kathy and Axel accused me of revealing the location of a cat, even though I never did. Random accusations, but some of them here and there can be quite serious and damaging. And if random people along the line hear about it and believe in it without understanding the context, then people can turn on you. And because I am a male, there's a chance it could go wrong. But luckily in my situation, it didn't because people, a fair few, and most of the audience members had a brain. Saw it from both sides. And, you know, there was no proof. There's no evidence. I think, though, equally what really did help was the fact that when those false accusations were being thrown about, it wasn't just aimed at me. It was aimed at a range of different people all at once. So the situation was so ridiculous that like it was hard to believe in. So it kind of cancelled one another out. But if you're in a different situation with a different audience of a younger generation who can't quite think for themselves and follow like sheep, lack reasoning ability, not all, but a fair few out there, you know their attitudes and the way they think. The channel owner 
that that group of audience look up to was accused of something, is that audience going to be loyal and stick around? Maybe not. So it depends the situation. At the end of the day, when it comes to the downfall of YouTubers, certain issues differ and impact from gender to gender, okay? So some of the allegations will mainly focus and be damaging on male creators. Uh, then when it comes to females, streamers, YouTubers, content creators, they'll have their own issues. Some cross over and others don't. Some are exclusively to one gender compared to another. And that's just because of how the audience reacts and how they perceive stuff. It gets messy, gets a bit intricate. But once again, Cleo, that's not happening right now with your channel because your channel health seems good and the growth seems steady. But it's just been alert on what to expect in the future if there was ever a time. It's not guaranteed to go wrong. It isn't. But if there was ever a blip, maybe you'd have a better idea on what to do. And this is just basing it off partially my experience of how I've watched videos in the past and subconsciously I've learned from them, hence why I'm still here where I am right now. So the times of true crime where people wanted to come onto my live stream, even though I never did one at that time with that topic, but I just didn't allow people onto the panel. One, because I just wouldn't, uh, I'm just not, I just don't do that stuff. But even if I wanted to, I probably still would have been cautioned, probably said, no, you're not coming on because look at the impact it's had on other channels out there. It might have torn people apart. It might have led to some channels being terminated, reported, just because you let a third party person on and the audience at the time didn't agree with it and reacted badly to it and may have reported. Or it, re it received some unwanted attention from some random strangers that have it in for somebody and then you're caught in a crossfire because if you align yourself with someone like that that's hated, then you become an enemy as well. But that didn't happen with me because I stayed away from it. So whilst all the other people caught up in the true crime community that going back and forth with the issues and the problems and who they surround themselves with, I didn't really have that problem as much because I didn't do live panels. So it maintained my channel health better than others out there. Okay, So my cautiousness, my stubbornness, me being wary, me calculating many different situations in my mindset on how should I react next to this person, to that situation? What should I say exactly? How should I word it? And how long for? Like calculating it in your head, thinking, well, if I do that, it didn't seem to go right for that YouTuber out there, hence it was the downfall. So maybe I shouldn't choose that option. Let's do this one instead, right? You can use your gut feeling as well if you want to. But it's just like, not that it always applies, but you can do the opposite of what other people did out there, right? Those people out there that chose a certain pathway or a certain decision and it backfired on them, maybe you do the opposite of that decision. You make the right move compared to what they did. It may not always apply, but it just adds another layer of protection, right? So basically, you just keep on doing what you're doing. But you want to do research. Research subconsciously enabling your channel to be healthy for as long as possible and to go on for as long as possible by looking at these videos in the background of basically what to do or what not to do. You know, you might learn something from that. And I just gave some examples today to put it into perspective, okay? So, ironically, will this video cause any drama or conflict? I'm sure there'll be some disagreements with some examples that I gave, but I'm just basing it off what I've seen, you know, and, and you know, what others have been through on the receiving end, okay? When it's been reported and documented, how things have gone about. Um, just the, the sense of the irony of it, there could be some resistance on this video just because of the irony of it. Because, I don't know, when I did a video last time round, I think I was talking about how, oh, this channel and this community, it's healthy, uh, not much going on here, not much trouble. Then the next day afterwards, some people arguing in the comments section. 
You know, what a coincidence. Typical, typical my luck, right? It, it can be like one-off occurrences. It's just the timing of it, which I find ironic and typical, right? So, yeah, hopefully this video or certain parts help clear and maybe you can put it into play yourself. But we'll leave it there for now, okay? So, um, goodbye for now.